as you can see on a clip there is a little problem with the pivot tube. When I faced it off the tube was uh, running through but probably not straight. So when I parted off I did it at an angle. When measuring this that it's a deviation of uh, around two hundreds of a millimeter. So I just mounted the piece in the tool grinder between centers and, uh, and grinded uh, the surface. And uh, I don't know if you can see It's a quite nice, uh, quite nice grind. Well, I think that is acceptable. Okay, the next problem I think was the pivot plate. This little one. The hardened piece in the middle was not flat to rest of the area. It was off by mm, round 100s, 200s of a millimeter. So I placed it in the surface grinder, grinded it on both sides to be sure that it's 100% flat. <laughs> Then I honed it on a whetstone. Okay, if we test this one. It's right above zero. It's quite difficult to get that indicator showing zero exact. But when we move the plate, the needle is not moving. And uh, each division on the indicator is two microns. It's a swish TESA, quite good indicator. So I'm satisfied with that. Okay, after all adjustments, it's time to do some more rimming. Still a lot of fluting.
So this is a couple of those pieces I, I rimmed after adjusting the tool. Uh, and uh, everything was okay. It was well within limits. Uh, even uh, though the, the 19mm reamer was a little little bit on the high side. Um, but that uh, depends on that it's a quite new reamer and a new reamer often used to cut on the high side. Well, this is the 19mm reamer I used. It's uh, not a high-end reamer, but it's it's not a super cheap either. I think it's made in Czechoslovakia and they used to make quite, quite good tools. But if you can compare the grinding edge of this one with uh, the bigger one that is a old Swedish quality reamer, uh, you can see that the edge is a little bit on the rough side compared with other reamer and uh, when I was doing the reaming I felt a kind of a grinding bar on the reamer so what I did I, I don't know if it's uh, the correct way to do it but I just took one of those uh, hard Arkansas stone and uh, gently removed the burr on the side uh, even even on the on the tip of the reamer uh, as, as I said I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's the correct way to do it anyway I tried uh, after this I made some more, re more reaming and uh, I used uh, cutting fluid to get as good hold as possible. And, and if you like to know more about reaming, it's um, it could be a little bit tricky with reaming. Uh, and Sandvik, they have a very good uh, uh, page on the internet where you can uh, find a lot of tips about reaming and some troubleshooting. I will put a link uh, in the description so you can go and check for yourself. It's uh, it's quite useful information there. show you some results from the reaming. This is a 10 millimeter hole. And here is one of the 19 millimeter holes. And then we have one 22 millimeter hole. I will zoom in so you can see the result.
Well, that makes me a little bit more happy than last time. OK, now the floating reamer holder is finished. Even if it was some small problems during the project, uh, it came out quite, quite good. You can really make nice holes with this tool. I'm a little bit curious to see what result it will do in other materials. Maybe I should try the reamer holder on some cast iron parts next time. So it was a fun project and I hope I can get back with uh, some more in another occasion and hope hope you enjoyed this little series. Thanks for watching.